Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to part one of my seven part series on working with card kits. In this series, you're going to learn all about the card kits that Stampin' Up! is currently offering, including ones that are all inclusive, product medleys, and ones that have stamp sets that you can purchase separately. The first kit that we're going to be focusing on in this series is called the Notes of Kindness card kit. In each video, I'm going to show you what's included in the kits. I'm going to show you how to create the projects according to the instructions of the kit. And then I'm going to give you lots of ideas on how to create alternate projects with each kit. Let's get started on the Notes of Kindness card kit. It is a kit that is in our annual catalog. I'm going to open up the kit and show you everything that's in it. I like this kit so much that I'm on my second kit. In some cases, on some of the kits, I'm actually on my third or fourth kit. I love working with kits, as you know, from watching my channel, if you do. I like subscribing to Paper Pumpkin. I like things that come with coordinating products like this. And it's just so much fun to work with kits because everything you need is included. But then if you use some of your other products, you can extend all the kits. All right, so here's the, this is, this is a type of kit called an all-inclusive kit, meaning all-inclusive means it comes with a stamp set. I'm going to put that on a piece of paper. We will take a piece of Blushing Bride just to show you what that looks like. So here's the stamp set. Now, because I'm on my second kit, I'm not going to be stamping with this stamp set because I've already opened up my kit and I'm already using my stamp set. But know that each all-inclusive kit comes with a stamp set. It comes with a stamping spot or stamping some some kind of color if it's all inclusive. So this is basic black. And in this case, it has everything you need, including adhesives, twine, embellishments, and even a stamping block. So I'm just taking scissors. That doesn't come with it, the scissors, to help me open this. And I'm going to show you what, what's in this kit. So these are called Stampin' Dimensionals. Very important for giving your projects dimension. Okay, this Notes of Kindness card kit has all the same kind of envelopes. So these are, there are 20 envelopes. And I'll get to this color. Well, I'll tell you this color, but I'm going to get to the coordinating colors when I get to the instructions. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. So we have 20 envelopes that, that are the same. That's Blushing Bride. Then we have stickers. So this is all about thank you, this whole kit. So we have thank you, mercy, dunk, danke. So three different languages, okay, and they're nice script font. Okay, we have embellishments. And of, of course, these are just great for, these, these are great all year long, these nature embellishments, but especially for spring. And then we have the card bases themselves. Now, this is a note card size card base, but I'm going to be showing you cards that I create where I take these note cards and I turn them into full-size cards. But I already have, what I love about these kits is I already have everything I need to, to do that with. Like here's already, the, the backgrounds are beautiful. I have watercolor washes. So even if you're not, if you don't get into the whole note card thing, I'm gonna be showing you so many other alternative projects. So that was style two, this is the third style. With this beautiful leaf painted on there. And then this is the fourth style. So you have four styles of note cards. So enough to make 20, 20 cards, 20 note cards that is. So there you get to see all those. Now I'm gonna show you the rest of the embellishments. So these are stickers right here. This is an actual sticker. And then these are stickers. Great for layering your projects. And let's see how many sheets of those. That's pretty thick. Just one sheet of that kind of sticker. We have, a, we have in the bag copper twine. We have pearls. We have a stamping block. Look how thick the stamping block is. This is thicker than the one you get. It's a stamping up on it. Than the one you get with your paper pumpkin kit. So this is just as a heavy duty stamping block, acrylic stamping block. What I like when I get extra kits is even though I don't need the extra stamping block, the stamping spot and the stamps, I like giving them as prizes and things. So watch out for that. So we might do that during the series. Okay, so this is, these are some stickers. 
Okay, little flags. And then I love these. This this takes a lot of work for me to make these, like with my scan and cutter. When I'm making these stitch framelits and or with my die cutting machine, it takes a long time. So I really like having all these stitch frames already for me. So that's that's great. So we have a whole sheet of them. And then there's a piece of cardboard for protection. And every every kit, every all-inclusive kit, and every every kit, like I said, this is gonna all be all about card kits, project kits, all-inclusive kits. Card kits with separate stamp sets and a product medley will all be included in the series. So this, this is the, these are the instructions. So you can make cards that look like this, and then you can open up the instructions, and that's what I'm going to be showing you. And you can make, you can make these, and then I'm going to be showing you how to make all kinds of alternate projects as well. I'm going to be showing you my alternate projects. I'm not going to show you every single one in every single video due to time. But the one thing I always do when I open up the instructions is this. I look at the coordinating colors. Let me zoom in there so you can see this. This is very important, especially if you're buying a kit and I have links to my store, you know, how to buy these. These are these are for sale now in on my website. All these kits I'm showing you in this series. So the coordinating colors are basic black, blackberry bliss, blushing bride, mint macaron, mossy meadow, and soft sea foam. So what you do ahead of time, if you're ordering the kit and you want to make, say, full-size cards, you would go ahead and you would get some some cardstock. So for instance, soft sea foam is a good one. And I've already cut, I cut card bases ahead of time. And so I have soft sea foam already cut, uh, folded, scored. So that's just an idea. So if you want to, that, that would let you take a, a note card. Let me find a note card. And it would let you cut it apart and make it into a full-size card, which I'll be doing. See? So you can create your card bases ahead of time. So you can order the card stock that coordinates with the kits. Okay? Or just use the kits as is. Now, what I want to do now is I want to show you, before I stop the video and go off and make some projects and come back, I want to show you just a few cards that I made with my first kit that I have from this series. So this is a thank you card I made. And it's, you know, similar to the instructions. So you have, I have the copper twine I put behind it. I don't really look at the instructions as I create kits. I'm just going to be doing something according to the instructions only for the benefit of my viewers. But this is more like what I do. I, so I put, I put them in a bag if I'm giving this to a customer, like a thank you note. And I might not even write on it. I just say where I got it from, notes of kindness kind kit. Notes of, ki notes of kindness card kit. And I put Dunka along the back. That's the extra sticker because I didn't use the stickers. I just used the English stickers. And then I had the extra stickers for the bags. Okay, so that's another card made right from the kit. And here's another one. Okay, and this is you know pretty much following the instructions. So what I'll do is show you how to create this card here. You're so kind. We'll create that card according to the instructions. Then I will show you how to create, how to take these card bases Okay, I'm going to show you how to create a box from a card base. And then lastly, I'm going to show you how to make a full-size card. And that is just in this tutorial. I'm also going to show you lots of other projects I create with this kit. And then as you, as you watch the series, you're going to learn how to create all of my, I would call them my signature projects, my things that I keep going back to again and again. When I get a card kit, I keep making the same kinds of 3D projects because I have such great coordinating supplies to work with. All right, so we'll, we're, I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to do some crafting. I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you some projects. I'm going to teach you how to make some projects. And then in the conclusion of this part one of the series, I will show you what's coming up as, as far as the other kits we'll be covering in the series. Thank you. Crafty friends, I am back, and I've used up all the supplies in the Notes of Kindness card kit. After I'm done showing you how to make two projects, I will go through all 30 projects I created using one kit. I'm using only the stamps from this kit. You're so kind, thanks, thank you, and the smaller thank you. So right now I'm gonna show you how to create this card, You're So Kind. According to the instructions, except for the fact that I'm out of the copper twine that I showed you earlier. Okay, so I've saved, this is what's left of the sheet. And what I, again, I just love how easy this all is because these are already stitched for me and everything. So I'm gonna take 
a, a stamping block that I already have. So this is this is just stamping block D. But remember, your kit is an all-inclusive kit, meaning your kit comes with a brand new stamping block. But I'm using that one as a gift, so I'm just gonna you know use because I have a whole set of stamping blocks. I'm gonna use what I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and and yours what comes with ink. It comes with a stamping spot. I'm gonna go ahead and ink up my stamp using just a regular memento black ink pad. Okay, so when it's this big of a stamp, you're so kind, you have to turn it upside down because if you tried to just stamp it onto the stamp pad, right, it wouldn't really cover it. But you're gonna have a stamping spot, so that's gonna be conducive to turning upside down and just kind of stamping along. And what you wanna do is get good coverage and then you hold it up and you're like, mm, if I wanted to have that sort of faded look, like my first stamp here was sort of faded. This was the very first thank you I stamped. It was a little faded and it started getting darker as I went along. So if you want a faded look, leave it like it is. But if you want it to be dark and crisp, just keep inking it up. I have actually ordered a refill because I couldn't find my refill for this, like a re-inker for this stamp pad because I've been using it a lot. All right, so now we're gonna stamp the sentiments. These are the last two I have left. You are so kind. So again, stand over it so you can see the stitching and kind of center in there. And it's forgiving, so don't worry so much. And they, they do give you extra sentiments. I mean, extra, there's four of these, but there's there's lots of extra sentiments to use. So you can make more than 20 cards, as I'll show you. Okay, so I like that. Now we'll do another one. We're gonna make one card and one box, but I'm, gonna, I'm not putting this on the box. I'm just putting this on the card. I'm doing another one to see which one comes out better. That That's all. And because I saved the last two sentiments and I always tell you to be efficient while you have it out. While you have all your stuff out, just do all your stamping. So I really, I did the whole, all the stamping at once. Yeah, I do like that one better. It comes out a little darker each time. So then you clean your stamp and you, there's more we can do to this, which I'll show you in my alternate project. So I'm gonna pull this one out and that's the one we're gonna use. So to make the card, we're gonna pop out the embellishment that came in the kit. Nice, and it's gonna layer like that on top of there. Now it also has, it also calls for twine. See, if you look at the instructions, it, it requests to put some twine behind that. Well, I put twine behind everything I could possibly put twine behind. So then I ran, I ran out of the copper twine. Not a big deal. Okay, so now I'm gonna just take, so you have, so I'm just gonna put some dimensionals on here. So we're just going to, I'm just going to get my um, dimensionals to pop off here for me. So let's say we have, I'm going to put, I'm going to go ahead and put four on there. Move them around different parts. So let's see, four dimensionals. I've been popping every single, almost every single project up with dimensionals. Okay, now we need to get the card itself. So I only save, the only thing I save from the kit after making all my projects was the, the card that we're going to make a box out of and a card base to make this card out of. So that's all I saved. So you're going to take, so this is the little note card. And, and I'm, again, I'm gonna show you how to make these into full size cards. I'm just using a spatula. I just, I just have a spatula I got from, I think it's from Hobby Lobby. It's like a putty spatula. And you can use a bone folder to, to give your cards good creases. So sort of lay that there. And it's gonna go like that. Okay, just, just to see, we still gotta put the pink part behind it, just to see where this is gonna go. Okay, so good. Okay, good, now I'm not gonna, I'm only using dimensionals for the you so, you're so kind part and I put a little twine behind it. I have examples to show you. But for this part, I'm gonna use rolling adhesive. So what do I mean by that? So I, I like to just use, personally, so use the adhesive you're comfortable with. I personally use this, this big ATG advanced tape glider. But I will link to some other products, like something that's a little more portable, it's just called Tear and Tape. And you can sit around and you can just tear off pieces of tape and you'd have some rolling adhesive. But so use the adhesive that you're, you know, that you're comfortable with. So I'm ready to put that on, but not yet, because I need to put the pink part. See, so it's, it calls for the pink little banner behind there. So first make sure your card's going the right way. I don't, I don't like that side of the card, it has a little crease in the corner. I like this side of the card, so I'm gonna put the card down I'm gonna get the piece of sticker. These are these are the stickers I have left. I even used I even used scraps of all the stickers. These are the only two stickers I have left. 
I'm going to peel it off and I'm put it about, see how it's, it's kind of more toward the top, but it's centered this way, but not, it's centered horizontally across the card, but not vertically. Vertically, it goes up higher. Okay, now I can take that and put it right on the card. You're so kind. And then I want that straight, so something like that. It's going to stick off a little bit because I didn't, I might have to do this again. The reason is we're going to put this down. We're going to put that down first. How about that? Because that way when we put the you're so kind, and I'm going to put one dimensional in the middle of that. I'm on my second pack of dimensionals. I did use more dimensionals than it had. That's because you'll see I popped up everything. I put everything on dimensionals. I put, I put pearls on everything. I'm already into my second pack of pearls. I had to steal pearls out of my old kit. All right, so there, you're so kind. Now I take, for every single card in every project I did, I put pearls on everything in this, on this particular set. The first time I had the kit, I didn't put pearls on everything. So to put the pearls on things, I find it easier with a pair of scissors. I have a pokey tool called Take Your Pick, and it even has a putty end, but the putty doesn't stick to these pearls very well. So I think I found it easiest just to take scissors and just grab pearls that way. And I like to put three. I like to put three on everything. It's an odd number. All right, so that's it. That's how you make the notes. You're so kind. That's how you make the card. Now, wouldn't you be happy with this kit just as it is, crafty friends? I mean, that's great. The cards are cute as they are, as note cards. But I will show you how to make them bigger, or how I made them bigger. And let's take one of the only two envelopes I have left after cutting apart. Let's see, I've already cut this envelope apart. I was cutting apart the envelopes to use them as as projects. So I have two, like, or no, actually I actually have three full-size envelopes left. Or not full-size, note-size cards, because I used them to make to candy wrappers and things. So that's going to go with that. And we're just going to fold that. And so that's how I would give it to somebody. Now you, you can also ink around the little stitching and there's so much more you can do to it, but that's, that's in essence how you create a card from the kit. We'll get back to that. We're going to go back to that card from the kit. Now, here's how to make a box. So a box out of a card. So I need to show you the concept of a box out of a card. I don't want to show you the box I made with this card yet because it's a surprise, but here's, here's a concept. Here's a smaller box I made from a card, a card base. So this is, this is a box from a card. In other words, I'm going to take this card and turn it into a box using just my paper trimmer and using my scoring tool. Now, if your paper trimmer comes with a scoring tool, that's great too. Mine does. I just took it off because recently I was doing paper shares. And I had to cut a lot of designer series paper. And so I, I wanted to take off the scoring tool. So this, this paper trimmer from Stampin' Up does come with a cutting blade. Let me just show you that. So you see what I mean? This is a cutting blade and it comes with a scoring tool. <laughs> That's a dust in mine. But I took off the scoring tool. Now to make a box, you need, you take your card base and you cut it apart. You take your card base and you cut it into two pieces that are equal size. And then you need to take a smidgen off of one. Okay, because one's gonna be the lid and one's gonna be the bottom. So you're taking, so you're, in other words, these are both the exact same size right now, but you're going to see that I, when I take a smidgen off and you'll see what a smidgen is, a smidgen is just a little sliver and you want to sliver off the length and off the width. Oh, it's not yet. It's not there yet. Come on, go back in. Okay. We'll see if it's, if it worked. I just turned that over and put them like that. Yes. That's a smidgen. You want, you want the, you want the bottom of the box to be a little bit smaller. It's just easier to see when I'm on the white side. And that's a smidgen. So that's all I need the paper trimmer for. I'm going to show you my smidgens. That is the definition of a smidgen, just a sliver. So you're taking a sliver off the length and the width, and that way you're going to do the same scoring around all the sides. But in this case, you just you need the box lid to be a little bit bigger than the bottom of the card of the of the box. Okay, so now we're going to make a box. Throughout this series, I'm going to show you how to make loads of 3D items. And you're going to see me make boxes probably like this out of every single card kit that I show you. There's, there's seven parts of the series. So it's just one of my go-to crafts, okay? I always make boxes out of cards. Now you can, you can use any size you want. You can use, you can, depending on, I started with a smaller piece for this one. But this is, it just depends. You can make boxes narrow or tall. So let's just, for this box, let's make it, um, let's say one, two, three, 
So we have, this is an inch, okay? I'm using the Simply Scored, it's a scoring tool. This is an inch and that's half an inch. So let's go with five eighths of an inch. In other words, one little smidgen behind the half, the half mark. So what you do is you're gonna score all four sides at the same point. So if it's five eighths of an inch box, and I'll, I'll just have the different types of boxes I made in this example. And you'll see, you'll see what you can do if the box is taller or narrower in just a bit. So we're going to do that to the same, to the box and the lid, five eighths of an inch. So all the scoring is the same. Now let me show you this closer. Simply Scored is a neat little tool. It has lots of, if you're doing a lot of work with the Simply Scored, you can put the little marker there and be like, okay, I want to remember that five eighths of an inch. And you put the little marker there and you can remember that every time. That's really nice about the Simply Scored. I prefer this over using the paper trimmer, but if you don't have a lot of room, your paper trimmer does score. I just do so much work with making paper crafts all the time that I need my, I need, I think I already did that side. I need my Simply Scored. So that's how you do it. A little bit closer angle. I like to show different things at different angles. Hopefully I can hold this steady enough. What I've done is I've gone one, two, three, four, four eighths of an inch is a half. And I went one smidgen, one little notch beyond and I scored. What did I score with? I scored with the thin side, but it doesn't really matter. The thick side I usually use of this, this is a scoring tool that came with Simply Scored. I usually score with the thin side, the small ball, ball because this bigger ball is usually made for you know, helping you make flowers with. So now what you're gonna do to make your box, I gotta put some color in this for my white bounce. I just gotta put some color in the video. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is take your spatula and you're gonna, you're gonna like fold all your sides. Okay, so when you make a box, you you just do this, okay? Everything I do in this series, uh, the, I'll show you how, uh, if I use my scan and cut, I will explain how I used it, but for, for the most part, all the crafts I'll teach you how to make are going to involve the Simply Scored and or a paper trimmer and some punches. In other words, we're going old school, traditional methods of making lots and lots of crafts. I, this is These are things I make for craft fairs and such. These are just my 3D items. So now what you wanna do is you wanna make, you wanna cut where all along these little edges. And it's, I always kind of think of it as making the letter H. Okay, so first I do the little cuts. I'm cutting along where, now don't cut into the lid itself. You're just cutting along. Okay, so we would, We'd be able to make a box as it is. I mean, that would be it. That's all you need to do to make a box lid. However, however, right? It's good to miter the edges. So there's there's a couple ways you could do this. So mitering the edges involves this. So you can you can take a little notch right out of here. So you, it helps you if you take a little notch right out of these, like little tiny triangles. It's going to be easier to see when I when I do this on my other lid. And then after you take tiny triangles out, this is just to make it close a little better. This is for all boxes. Whenever you make a box in a lid, you can start out with it just one. You start out with one piece of paper that's slightly smaller than the other for the lid. And that's if the lid and the box are going to have the same, the same um, size, in which case most of my boxes do. All right, so that's it. So that's, I'm going to show you it again a little bit slower. So here, so what that did is I mitered the edges. So that means like now when I close it, right? Now when I close the box, it doesn't pop out the side. Okay, so now let's do this one and I'll do it a little bit slower. So what we have, let me just make sure you have good lighting and good angle and everything. So what I have is a box. You have, you have a box and you have, you've scored along, you made little cuts and it looks like the letter, the letter H. Okay, so now you take these little, bits, you're just kind of cutting little triangles. It doesn't really matter if you cut them this way or that way. You're just cutting tiny little triangles out right along where you scored. Okay, so that's what I'm doing first. And you don't have to do this. You could just, you could just miter the edges that way, but let's see. So this is box making. We'll get back to this box making in the series, I'm sure, and I'll try to. But I have lots of other 3D crafts to show you as well. So that is how you you are making this, so that alone would have worked. So if me cutting these tiny little triangles, this is what they look like, These those little triangles, me just doing that alone, would you can make your box. 
see, you can turn your box and it won't stick out the edges. But I go one step further and I also, I also do what's called mitering the edges on the outside. So I take it and I go like this and I cut little tiny triangles out of each of these little sides. So I hope you get a good angle for that. And I'm using what's called the Stampin' Up! Paper Snips. This does not come in the kit. These are fantastic for fine detail work. These little paper snips. I think they're called paper snips, but either way, there are scissors that we sell. All right, so now you're gonna take glue, okay? Again, use the adhesives you're comfortable with. I know Stampin' Up! sells different adhesives and yada, 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 and you guys can talk about it all you want, but I'm using my tacky glue. This is the glue I've been using since way before I ever became a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. It is my glue. It is the glue that I like to use. So use whatever adhesive you're, from, you're comfortable with. We do make great adhesives. It's just that this is the glue that has always been my friend through thick and thin. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm holding it there for a few seconds. Now you can use clothespins to help you hold your boxes together. Okay. And you, you can just use your hand. If you're gonna use your hands, I would normally use clothespins if I'm making a lot of boxes, but if you're gonna use your hands, you know, hold it there for, let me turn, let me get some color there for you because it's getting really washed out. I'm sorry about that. It's just the way that my camera is. So then see how I'm just holding it there for a few seconds. It just gives it, it just seals it in place. And it, you could do that again with the clothespin. So that's the lid, looking good. And we're gonna do now, taking some tacky glue. And again, I'm just gonna do this a little bit slower. So putting glue on each corner. Oops, I have to wash my baby wipe. I'll get it later. You don't want to get glue in your in your score in your scoring board. So you want a little bit of glue um, on every corner. All right, so that is all. I'm gonna rub it on there. And I just need to sorry folks, if I don't get this off of my if I don't get the glue out of my inside of my scoring tool, we will be in trouble. So I'm using a baby, a baby wipe because <laughs> I do not want glue in those ridges. All right. So now what I'm doing is this, this glue is fast drying. So I have to be careful, you know, so I'm going to go like that, rub it a little bit, spread it out, rub it a little bit, spread it out. Ooh, it's getting bright, bright, bright. Let's put that in, back in there. And we're going to do this side. And that is how you make your box. We'll hold it there. And I want to just show you because I don't want you to have any mystery. How did you make those boxes? I want to show you that because we made one a smidgen bigger than the other, one is going to fit inside the other. It's, it's kind of magical. That's how you're, it's like everyone tries these complicated measurements, but if you just make one piece of paper smaller than the other and you score at the exact same spot on both the top and the lid, one is going to fit inside the other better because you started out with a smaller piece of paper. This, in this case, cardstock. Okay, so I don't remember which one's the top and bottom. Let's find out. We're gonna put them inside each other. One's bigger than the other. This one's bigger. That's the top. That's all. One fits on top of the other one. Perfect, and I'm not kidding. That's how simple it is to make a box. See, a box with a lid. Okay. So, let's move that out of the way. Move, I'm gonna move my whole. I need to clear my table. So you have the notes of kindness card kit. You have, let me just show you, we could just throw together. I don't think I have, I only have one more sentiment, but we could put, maybe we could put this on that box. So that'll be box. This will be, let's see if we can't put that on the box. That's the only thing I have left. So we'll have that. And of course I would trim off the edges because I told you you're gonna see 30 projects. So why, why not just decorate the box a little bit while we're at it. And somewhere I did one more, um, you're so kind. Here it is, you're so kind. And what I would do then is I would take this. Now I'm gonna start talking about other products that I used you know, throughout. But this is what, this is not something you can buy separate. This is a blushing bride marker and it comes in the set of markers so what i would do around the stitching if i'm you know typically doing the projects i would just go around the stitching like this with my blushing bride 
and it and it works out really well. So that's what I did for some of my projects. And of course, the little pearls and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that is how to create a 3D project very easily out of this kit. There is no better time to get kits than during celebration. Celebration is what we have going on until March 31st. You earn free products for each $50 you spend. The free products include designer series paper, stamp sets, there's some embossing folders, etc., etc. You can earn during celebration, and these kits can be what you buy, and then you can earn some free things. So I have lots of kits to show you, so I, please stay tuned because this is the best time to shop at Stampin' Up! Plus. It's the best time to do kits because they have everything you need and a lot of you are home right now and this is like great fun for not just you but for your whole family all right let me sh let me do this this is what I'm gonna do I have to tell you first of all what my husband suggested I'm gonna let me just give you something to look at while I'm talking my husband suggested that I should tell my viewers how long it actually took me to make this whole kit well typically since the kit is only 20 cards I actually made 30 cards, so I probably took longer than you would make to, to make these. So I did take, I did a timer, I did a stopwatch, and I crafted in four sessions. The hour and a half was my first session. Then I did an hour, then I did another hour, then I did a half hour. So total of four hours. And I told my husband it took me four hours, and he said, well, maybe it would take other people, maybe they should times by 1.5 because you're a really fast crafter. So. At the very most, you could make my 30 projects and I will have pictures and dimensions and all kinds of resources for you to make my projects. If you want to make these 30 projects, or you know, give or take, it would take you, if it took me four hours, it might take you five and a half if you're not used to making these. Still, 30 projects in five and a half hours and don't sit and just do nothing else. I was watching The Golden Girls. I was watching, you know, different TV shows. I was listening to um, YouTube, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I didn't just sit and craft. I, the only time I stood is when I'm stamping. I have to stand when I'm stamping. So what I'm about to show you is this. I'm gonna show you, without anything else, this. I'm gonna show you the cards I made. So I made nine cards just with you. I just made one. I made one and I made nine cards total that are just the note cards right from the kit. So let me show you those and we'll put them, we'll put them around so you have something to look at. Notice how they're each different. What happened is I started running out of twine at, toward the end there and I, I um, just instead of wrapping it in circles like for this one I just threw a little piece there just until I ran totally completely out of out of the copper twine see my roll is empty <laughs> so used up the kit very well okay again each of these have matching envelopes blushing bride so notice how I never make the same card twice these are just all different ideas I'm gonna try to photograph these a few in each picture so you can see and you can just copy everything you see and make everything I did with this kit I mean, just go for it. Use all the designs just as inspiration. And use the, of course, just follow the instructions and you'd have pretty cards as well. So these are just what I came up with and I didn't have any pre-planning. I mean, I did plan on I was gonna make some boxes, make some cards. I planned out the card bases a little bit, but that's it. I didn't, I didn't know what designs I was coming up with until I came up with them. And this is my second kit from the Notes of Kindness card set. I like this one has lots and lots of copper. Maybe that's why I ran out of copper twine because I put it on there. And notice I'm putting pearls on everything. And, and again, to get those pearls, I just use my scissors to help me get those pearls. All right, so now that I've shown you the nine cards I made, I wanna explain now what you, what you do to make a full-size card. And I wanna tell you that about how I did this. So I have, ahead of time, I had, you know, I always have card bases on hand, and these are just, for example, two soft seafoam card bases okay so what you do is you take an eight and a half by eleven sheet of cardstock we do sell card packs packs of cardstock in eight and a half by eleven sheets you take it you cut the cardstock in half i'm just going to show you how i did this you take an eight and a half by eleven sheet of cardstock you cut it in half and you score it you have a2 cards this is an a2 card it is five and a half by four and a quarter that's it no mystery there okay that's how you make a card Okay, so, so they, these are the card bases. I always have lots of card bases around. For this project, the only thing I used, what I'm about to show you now, what I'm about to show you is 10 full-size cards, meaning A2 cards. The only thing I had to use was my own cardstock. I used only the supplies from this kit, only the stamps from this kit. 
I used two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock, one in Mossy Meadow, one in Blushing Bride. I'll put this in the description. I also used five sheets of this, like of this size, eight and a half by 11, for a total of seven sheets of cardstock. So everything I'm showing you, I've done with seven sheets of cardstock and only the embellishments from the kit, except for when I get to the, some 3D projects. Okay, so here's my cards. This is a, this is a card with this sticker, the script sticker, and I just added lots of extra little stickers from the kit. And this is this the, the base of this is called soft sea foam and then I did a layer of mossy meadow that's what's on here mossy meadow so I took my eight net or I took my 12 let's see 12 by 12 sheet of mossy meadow and I was able to get full-size card base I was able to get a couple mattings and layerings I was able to get some extra little things to make circles out of and everything so that's how I did it and now this next one is I took a Blushing Bride card base. This is Blushing Bride, one of the coordinating colors. And I used, again, just the embellishments from the kit. But just notice something. When you take the regular, when you take a note card and you turn it into, that's it. You can take the same embellishments. There it is. And you, you turn it into a full-size card. It just has so much more elegance. And like you can write so much more inside in your notes. And it just looks really cute. Of course, then you don't get the matching envelope. You have to do something else for the envelope. I just use my Whisper White envelopes. All right, so that is that card. Next card, I took Blackberry Bliss. Blackberry Bliss is one of the coordinating colors. It matched the berries. This is one of the card bases as a background. And for this one, I have like about a half inch margin around the edges. And again, I'm gonna photograph these for you. They'll be part of my, my blog post that accompanies this series. So if you want to copy these designs, I mean, go for it. Okay, now this, then I did, then you're so kind. And this is when I started getting into some extra stamping. So when I use extra materials, I'm going to explain if I did use extra materials. You didn't need to. This is just right from the kit. Mossy Meadow background. Uh, this is the envelope liner. Now, sometimes I wanted to put, I wanted to try out some of the stamps in the kit. They had this really cool stamp. It's like a little, here, it's better to show you from the stamp set. It's this little thing. These little, these little crosses. I said, oh, they're so cute. And I would just kind of, I just took some soft sea foam, just some ink, and I'll explain any extra materials I used in the description of this video. And I just put some on the stamping block and I stamped around it. And that was it, very easy. Now for this one, I took the leaf. There's the leaf already mounted and some soft sea foam. And I added some little sprigs with that leaf. Okay, so that's Mossy Meadow. You're so kind. Another you're so kind, I took pieces of the sticker I took the envelope background, some copper twine, some pearls, super, super simple. These cards are so simple. Like I can't get over how simple they are. And then um, this one, I took soft sea foam. I took a blushing bride card base. And there's the thank you, the smaller thank you. This layered up with dimensionals and stamped a little bit of the sprigs in the background of the blushing bride card. Put that over there. Here's another one. I started running out of twine. So I just had to dangle a little piece of copper there, use some stickers, popped up the thank you, and there's the tree. And this is soft sea foam again. Here's the longer thank you. And you can notice how I used that marker again. We're back to using that marker. And little little um, stitching around. Now these stitching, this stitching already came as part of the kit. I just accented or enhanced the stitching with the blushing bride. Okay, let's see, two more full-size cards. We have a card with soft sea foam and blushing bride. Okay, I used up by the time I was done, I used every flower, I used every single card base, and I used every, every embellishment and every piece of copper and every little pearl. But again, I have 30 projects. So there are my cards to show you, and this is Blackberry Bliss, and you already know the soft sea foam. Now, ready to show you my 3D projects. I'm so excited about these. My go-to crafts are always like the same, and you're gonna see me use these throughout the series. This this go-to craft is one of the, th a thing I call a Ghirardelli holder, and it's also something you could put a tea bag inside of. It'll hold a tea bag. You're so kind, just an extra piece. I did have to use extra ribbon because I ran out of copper twine, but copper would look fine behind there. I just used this retired organdy white ribbon I had, so use whatever ribbon you have. So I, I put you're so kind, I stitched around the edges, I used a piece of Blushing Bride cardstock. I even stamped along the back with that sprig in the soft sea foam. And then I put a Ghirardelli chocolate inside and another thank you. I didn't use any extra sentiments as I mentioned. 
Only the sentiments that came in the kit. I have a tea bag here somewhere to show you. Well, I, I, trust me, a tea bag will fit in there too. I'm not sure exactly where it went. Okay, but I don't like to make my crafty friends wait, but a tea bag will fit inside this holder. Okay, so now let's close that. So I just stapled these together. And all of these things I've shown either on YouTube before or in my blog, but throughout this series, we'll make, we'll make these. Okay, because tonight we'd made a box or, you know, today we made a box. Um, we, we will make other things. Okay, now let me show you my tags. I made three tags with this kit using soft sea foam as the background. And I did cut out the circles using punches or my and my scan and cut. So whichever, however you make your circles. I, st I made some circles and I used the stamp from the stamp set. This thank you stamp. Mossy Meadow Blushing Bride. Some copper twine, some pearls, and here are the three tags. This one has a Hershey Nugget on the tag, so it's a 3D sort of tag. And then these all have organdy, organdy ribbon. This nice thing about that kind of ribbon is you can dye it. You can actually color it with the alcohol blends markers. Okay, so those will be, again, I'll photograph these and you can get an idea of you know, how to make things with your kit. Okay, let's show you what else. Um, I always save my favorite for last, but I did show you this earlier, but I'm gonna show you now some boxes and um, tag treats. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna show you a couple boxes. Now, depending on the size box you start with, that's how you end up with different different designs and like if you depending on how you score it and here's what you can put inside this little box I made one that hold three Hershey nuggets the Hershey nuggets are wrapped using the envelope liner and I put the little thank you on top and little pearls okay now I'm going to show you a couple more boxes that are like this using that same concept all of these boxes I'm showing you are just using the card bases from the kit I made them straight out of the card bases and I just had to use my own soft sea foam cardstock for the bottom because this this took up more than this box is so big it took up more than the card base like it it went over. What do I mean by that? Like usually, when you make a box, you use like the top of the box is one part of the card and the bottom of the box is the other. But in this case, to make this kind of box, I had to go way over here and cut into the this part. So then I just made the soft sea foam for the bottom of these boxes, and this box is really fun because I wrapped lots of Hershey Nuggets to put inside. And look how many fit in there. And this is a half inch margin. So this box is a half inch margin. Now, the, all of these, because the reason I had so many envelope liners left over is because I made only, like I made sure I matched all my note cards to the envelopes. I made sure I had enough to make sure because these all need the matching envelope, right? But then I took all the leftover envelopes because I have a lot of full size cards and I didn't need those envelopes and I created Hershey Nugget wrappers and wrappers to go around my treats and things like that. Okay, I have, let me show, I'm gonna show you this first. I'm gonna show you my tag treat and then I'm gonna show you my final projects where I incorporated yet another part of the design. So this one is, this is called a tag treat. I'll be showing you how to make this in this series. It's something I make using this punch here, and it's the same thing, it's the same punch I used, oops, something's stuck in there. It's the same punch I used for the bookmark as well, or the tags, I should say, the tags I showed you earlier. It's called the Delightful Tag Topper Punch. It's my go-to punch. I've literally made thousands of things with this punch and the scalloped tag topper punch. Thousands of things, and it's still going strong. I mean, it's such a great punch. So you start out with a two inch strip of, this is, in this case, it was the card base with the with the watercolor wash. Now then I also did some blushing bride around the edges and I stamped around the edges. Now here's what I did for my final two, my favorite projects. I did a tag treat as well, but this time I took the bunnies from the, the kit, the last month's kit, and you can check out my YouTube tutorial on what to make with the, it's called No Matter the Weather Paper Pumpkin Kit, and I used what's called the Stampin' Blends, the alcohol markers, and I colored in the bunnies with coordinating colors. This is soft sea foam, and this is mint macaron, and they come in pairs of light and dark. So again, just ways to extend your capabilities of your of your kit is just to be able to color some things. So here, I colored this bunny in mint macaron, and this bunny in soft sea foam, the front bunny. Let me show you what's inside those, and then I'll show you my bunny box. So inside here, we just have Hershey Nuggets. It fits two Hershey Nuggets precisely. 
And I also did some stamping onto the card base. Okay, these are great little thank you treats. Great for care packages, great for pick-me-ups. You go to a restaurant, even now you're, you're going to take out, right? It's not a lot of sitting in. But these waiters, this is their livelihood. Waiters and waitresses. So give, give somebody when you pull up to a, you know, take out your to-go food, give somebody a little thank you gift and they will be so like happy to get something especially around this time with the you know with the little Easter bunnies on it and here is my favorite project <laughs> this is the little Easter bunny box using the same concept the mint macaron bunny and the soft sea foam bunny okay so that stamp set is part of the paper pumpkin kit and I did show on YouTube how to cut out the stamped images using your brother scan and cut so I didn't fussy cut these little bunnies I used the kit Okay, and let me show you what's inside. And then I'll talk about the rest of the series a, a little briefly. What's inside, we have some Ghirardelli. These are just little hearts. I also have Ghirardelli eggs. And these are just little hearts I have from Valentine's Day. But they have not expired, and they're just a little piece of heaven. So now I'm giving out these little hearts, and I'm giving out some with eggs, with Easter eggs on them. So that is all the 30 projects you can make with the Notes of Kindness card kit. So what's coming up? Stampin' Up! offers many kits. So I decided that because a lot of us are home and crafting more and you need things to do with the family, and I decided that I'm gonna just go through all the kits. It's very, very ambitious of me. I even had to purchase a lot of, I had to spend a lot of extra money to get this, to make this series because I didn't actually own all the kits. So I only owned about half of the kits. But I, I decided I'm gonna challenge myself and see what I can make with each kit. So there'll be links if you want to get these kits and follow along with me and just do all kinds of like amazing projects. I don't know what I'm going to make yet, but I know that I'll be using my go-to crafts for all the kits. So here's what we have coming up. And I'm ne this is not in any particular order. It's, it's the order where, as supplies come in and as, the, as I use up what I have. So today we did the Notes of, card, Notes of Kindness card kit. This all-inclusive kit makes 20 cards and it's only $35. That's all. But if you spend $50 at my store, you can get a free celebration item. So this is what I just made now. So I will be making the looking up card kit. This is with the, with the hot air balloons and the gold foiling and just really, really neat. Okay, these are all great projects for spring and summer. I'll be making the lots of happy card kit. I already have lots of refills for this kit, but I can't wait to get the, the full kit itself. Okay, so this is lots of happy. And then over here, it just kind of shows you what's in each kit. So right now I'm showing you things, kits from the annual catalog. I'm going to be making For the Love of Felt. Maybe that one will come next because this is just great for spring. For the Love of Felt project kit. A lot of 3D felt flowers on it. Okay, so we'll be making that. And I also have a project medley, a product medley. Okay, let's see what else. I have... I have these, okay, I think I, that was one, two, three, four. Yes, I have this product medley. This one's probably gonna be pretty ambitious as well. This is a product medley that comes with all kinds of dyes and paper and botanical prints. I, I probably need to get this one done before the end of celebration because if you get this medley, you can, you can earn some things. And so that's called botanical prints, product medley. Okay, so I'll be showing that one as part of the series. I'm going to be showing this one, Seriously the Best Project Kit. Okay, Seriously the Best. So you can look forward to that one. And that one is not an all-inclusive kit. Yeah, I had to get the stamp set separately. And I also have ink. But I know that some of these kits are going to resonate with you, and you're just going to hopefully want to try to make these projects yourself. And this all-inclusive kit, three cheers for you. Okay, so no particular order. I'm not gonna introduce all these kits in every video. I'm just gonna make the next video just on the next kit I decide to make, the next video on. Not the next video on YouTube, because I have other tutorials coming up, but the next video in this series. So keep an eye out for more videos in this series, and I'll at least get a couple done before the end of March. And all of these products are good for a couple more months, meaning this, this particular catalog, I always have to like look at what, here it is. I always have to look at the dates myself on the back of the catalogs to make sure. This is good till June 2nd. So the kits inside this catalog, they're, they're good till June 2nd. And then this is our annual catalog, also good till June 2nd. So all seven kits I'll be showing you are available while supplies last or until June 2nd. 
So you'll be able to make and follow along for months to come. But again, celebration only lasts till the end of March. So I definitely want to finish up some projects before the end of March. I like to challenge myself to make things with kits. I love how kits coordinate. And I hope you do too. And I hope you'll go out and get this Notes of Kindness card kit. Because spreading gratitude will make many people feel very good. Especially in this time when so many people are going above and beyond to make us safe. Thank you. That's all for now. This is The Papered Chef.